Hey guys, this is Fernando doing another video for the Monster Survivalist. In this case, doing a book review, which is something that I don't do very often. The reason for that is that many of the books uh, that I read, and I do read a, a lot of them, I still have a pile to go through. Books are one of my favorite and most uh, valuable source of information. We tend to think that it's everything on the internet already. Not so. Some of the best information that I find, some of the most unique one is because of, of books. You know, rare books or older books that are, have been out of print for a while. Whenever I see a pile of old books, I dig in and see what I come, come across. That's been some of the, of the best information I've I found when doing research on different topics. This case is a book that you will easily find, very popular book these days. No Easy Day, the only first-hand account of the Navy SEAL mission that killed Osama bin Laden. You will, it's one of the most uh, best-selling books these days. Written by Mark Owen, that's the Navy SEAL operator, even though that's not his real name, and Kevin Maurer. Honestly, the, after reading a couple of paragraphs, you quickly notice that this book has been written by a professional writer, obviously very well edited by Penguin as well, so you know it's a very uh, nice book in that way. I would have really liked to read what this guy had to say instead, rather than the processed information by, by the professional writer. You know, because that's the way in which you get all the, the nitty gritty details and you, you get more of a feeling uh, of the person that is that is uh, writing the book, if it's uh, he himself who is writing. When it's someone else writing the book for him, it really feels like something, you know, like wh what you pick in a supermarket, which is exactly where I picked this book in the supermarket. I found it and said, yeah, what the hell, the price is right and such, just threw it in there. Yeah, but that's generally what happens when, when you have uh, like uh, the mass produce stuff that's uh, one of the things that you lose even though it makes uh, th there were a few nice uh, points in, in here of course it's about this uh, this guy's uh, Navy SEAL operators um, basically a little bit of his early life how he got involved with with the SEALs some of his experience some of his his missions and finally the mission in which they end up killing Osama bin Laden and even though it's been filtered a lot by uh, by Penguin, there are, are a few little uh, details here and there that are worth uh, noticing. You know, and I took account of them when they make reference uh, regarding the the weight of the equipment, the 60 pounds of equipment. A lot of the book focuses uh, on the importance of of the training the guys have, the Navy SEALs have, the, the training and most of all the, the mental aspect. You know, here's a little quote: "It was a mental thing." No, it's uh, something that it's recurrent through the book. It's all about the, the training and within the training the, the mental resilience that these guys have. Uh, of course there, there's a huge uh, physical factor, the, the, the fitness part of the training, but eventually what differences those that make it and those that don't is going to be coming down to that, to the mental, the, how, how strong they are mentally speaking, how much they can handle stress and, and pressure. That's, uh, you know, that's obviously the, the key point. There's a part here where he he performed poorly physically speaking, yet he still makes it to the top of the ranks in some of the most uh, elite uh, groups within the Navy SEALs. And you clearly notice that it's because of that, even though, even though he had poor physical, um, a poor fitness score because of, you know, he had been doing training before and uh, when being selected, he had this, uh, this, um, you know th this lack of, of proficiency in physical training when he is interviewed later and the 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 answers he gives obviously are the, the ones that they are looking for he, he says I take full responsibility he, he doesn't give excuses he doesn't uh, give excuses for his failures he just takes responsibility and and goes on that's the kind of mental fortitude they were obviously looking for and there's things a, a lot of, of things regarding well not so much a little bit of, of stuff regarding gear what type of gear they use he mentions the importance of, of of testing it time again and again and trusting your gear knowing how to use it well it says that you know they, they were provided um, Gerber multi tools which aren't that great Gerber multi tools <laughs> the other men are by far better multi tools uh, well the, the kind of weapons Heckler and Koch uh, 416 Yotech that's uh, you know it's interesting for someone that likes firearms it's, it's nice to notice all that stuff uh, then when he, when he kills someone for his first ten, for the first time, here, here it is. He says uh, it's the first per the first person I ever shot, and uh, with all that time I spent thinking about how it would make me feel. It really didn't make me feel anything. You know, it's 
again, one of those things that you often see people talk about, you know, when you kill someone, this and that. You know, if you really have so much um, uh, stuff going on regarding that sort of thing, you really shouldn't be picking up uh, a fire in the first place. Uh, if you are, especially, of course, if you're in the military, but also for a, for a civilian, a guy that is uh, uh, training for, for self-defense, defending himself and his family, it really should be something that there's not a single doubt in your mind. If there's even 1% of doubt, then just leave that gun, do something else. Else. You have to be 100% sure, you know, and it's not everyone roll the same way. Some some people are different. You know, if you are 100% that we're all going to be dying, you just want to be making it <laughs> until old age and you don't want some some bastard come in and kill you, you know, that's the kind of thing that you have to make your up make up your mind before. Uh, knowing we had every very challenging climb ahead, he he drops his his rifle plates you know, there's a quote here, light is right. You know, there's little quotes like, light is right, uh, when in doubt, they take it. You know, the, if there's a, a piece of gear they think they would be needing, they would usually take it, which kind of goes against light is right. And uh, there's also in one part where he says that a common if you know line within this survival and preparedness community, uh, the, t the one is none, t two is one, one is none thing. He, he mentions it at some point. Uh, overall, you know, very, it's really not that long. You can knock this book in, in four hours or so if, if, you're, if you're a fast reader. When, when dropping the place, he says, uh, if, if I get shot tonight, don't tell my mom I, I didn't wear my plates. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you, you, they obviously kind of later regretted not having those plates with them. The night vision goggles that they use, very cool stuff, 65,000 bucks worth of, of night vision. These are special night vision goggles that use, that have uh, four, four tubes for a better 120 degree vision. Then, then there was this, this thing here that I thought was pretty interesting. This firearm, I don't know if you get to see that. Call it's like a, a chopped grenade launcher in, in 79 40 millimeter grenade launcher. It's a it called it the, their pirate gun. <laughs> you know, it's all specialized equipment. Each guy ends up carrying and wearing whatever he feels is is best. They have what they call the big boy rule. They they make their own decisions and why shouldn't they? I mean, they've been training so much for this stuff. If they are not able to make up their minds about what they have to use and such. No, it doesn't make much sense. He mentions more stuff about his gear. You know, he, he knew it would work. Uh, these boots, Solomon Quest, these are excellent boots, excellent shoes for trekking. And he, he says that uh, they were a little bulkier than the low top trail running shoes my teammates sometimes wear. Uh, I swore by these boots because they protect my baby ankles, which I twist with great frequency. That's a pretty good idea. I completely agree with having good. You know, having overkill in terms of, of your food. Uh, then there's stuff about um, of, of dynamic entry when uh, making room clearing and such. Uh, throttle on, throttle off. How uh, they would have to find that that exact point of balance between going too fast, going too slow when when going in. It's really complicated. I don't know if, if you guys ever worked in a team in that way with with more people. It's it, it's very very difficult, and you can understand why it takes years to master and to have that sort of communication with, with your teammates. Uh, sometimes you're going too fast, sometimes you're going too slow, and people are getting are shooting at you, making everything more complicated. So finding that perfect balance between going too fast, going too slow, yeah, that, that's that's good stuff. Again, wish that he had written it himself and have more of this little stuff that you notice is what actually got through after the writer and, and the editors did their job. No, then he says, I had no barrier between after the mission that where they killed Osama bin Laden. Uh, what he says is that because of the um, how, how big it got in, in, in the press and the, in the media, he says that I had no barrier between home and work. I've always been good at mentally blocking out the work I'd done overseas. When I was home, I was home. Seeing these images was like crossing the two streams and it made my head hurt. You know, there's a thing, if you're a professional soldier in the military, you have what he calls his work, you know, and then he goes back home and he has his his life, and that's that's different. It's two different realities for him. But uh, for someone, 
that is uh, going to be doing you know things regarding survival preparedness and when things uh, get very very ugly which unfortunately <laughs> given recent events uh, my friends I think that that's going to be what you're going to be seeing not that long down the road there's this problem that you don't have these two words the, the, it's all in one you, the problem of, of keeping your family safe of keeping yourself safe of of, of of fighting off people that wanna wanna hurt you and all these miseries are not a work are in your home are in your environment it's affecting your family your kids very very difficult very stressful you know the, the worse it is the, the harder it is to deal with and you know, I suppose I've covered that stuff in some of our videos and such but um, it, it's very different when it's when it's work and when it's your life when it's your life in terms of, of your daily life you don't have that safe place where you mentally and even physically relax it's it's in your home it's in your life all day long 24 7 every single day of your life until you get out of there so guys I think that it's a good book you know um, I wish he had written it himself even if it had been a little bit shorter or whatever but uh, not the, the edited uh, and processed stuff that uh, a, a guy does you know with that information that's basically it guys good book and all stuff take care folks remember to subscribe and see you in our next video have a great day